Welcome back to Rural Entertainment. Today, we delve into a captivating journey of resilience and redemption as we explore the remarkable tale of Vibes Cartel's quest for freedom. Join us as we uncover the twists and turns of his story, shedding light on the trials, triumphs, and the enduring spirit that defines his journey. Get ready for an insightful ride through the world of music and justice, right here on Rural Entertainment. Dancehall star Vibes Cartel has openly declared his readiness for a potential retrial but is calling on Jamaica's Court of Appeal to act justly in determining whether there should be one. This comes after the UK-based Privy Council overturned his murder conviction on Thursday and ordered that the case be sent back to the island's Court of Appeal. A move that Cartel views as a significant victory not just for himself but for justice. In a statement to FOX5NY journalist Lisa Evers on Thursday evening, Cartel shared his thoughts on the recent developments and his outlook on the future legal proceedings. Evers conducted Cartel's last broadcast interview in 2021. I feel victorious in this very moment as the Privy Council in their infinite wisdom, understood the assignment and remedied the situation by quashing my conviction. He began the statement. I am now back to being an innocent man in the eyes of the law. A grave injustice was done to me and my co-accused in the original trial and subsequently I sat Buchanan, John Clark, David Hislop, Hugh Southey, Julian Malins. And Alessandra Labiche pleaded my cause and my cries were heard in the land's highest court. On Thursday morning, the Privy Council sided with Cartel and his co-accused Sean Storm, Kahira Jones, and Andre, Mad Sus, St. John in finding that juror X, who was accused of attempted bribery should have been removed from the trial. The council's decision stated that the original trial judge aired when he let the accused juror participate in the final verdict, which compromised the safety of the convictions and violated the appellant's right to a fair trial. Bert Samuels, an attorney for Sean Storm, has said that the four men can now request bail pending the Court of Appeals decision on a possible retrial. In his statement, Cartel expressed confidence that the Court of Appeal, which previously upheld his conviction, would now do the right thing. I am also very confident that the Court of Appeal in Jamaica will do the right thing in the name of equity, fairness, and justice and free us. Some people have expressed their concern to me that a retrial may be ordered but to them, I say, what is there to retry? He said. Cartel highlighted what he deemed to be flaws in his conviction, including the Court of Appeal's acknowledgement of the defense's efforts to undermine the credibility of Lamar, we, Chow, the prosecution's sole eyewitness. However, the Court of Appeal did not issue an opinion on Chow's testimony. The court merely stated the facts of the trial regarding Chow. They wrote, as might have been expected, Mr. Chow's credibility was severely impugned at the trial. Among the matters relied on for this purpose were, the alleged internal inconsistencies and discrepancies in his evidence. The technical evidence, which we will mention below, relating to the timing and place of origin of telephone calls to and from his cellular telephone on 16 August 2011. And the production of a letter dated 13 November 2013 purportedly written by him to the public defender. In the letter, Mr. Chow stated that he had in fact seen the deceased alive after the 16th of August 2011, and that he, Mr. Chow, had been pressured by the police to give the statement which he gave on the 24th of August 2011. Cartel's statement continued, and unsafe by analysis from forensics experts hired by my team from the United Kingdom. Not only that, police officers in the original trial also admitted that they tampered with text messages using the Cellbrite machine and even admitted that they used the cell phones which were in evidence to make phone calls and send text messages to various numbers including my then lawyer, my baby's mother, and to my music publisher. He added, with that being said, the most important point to me is that I am an innocent man. So in reality, I'm not in the least bit worried as I know I will be acquitted and go home to my family whom I have not been together with for over 10 years. Thank you for joining us on this enlightening journey through Vibes Cartel's pursuit of freedom. We hope you enjoyed our exploration into his story. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to Rural Entertainment for more fascinating insights into the world of rural entertainment. Until next time, stay tuned and keep exploring with us. At what point, or, or if any, when, when it is exactly
the responses or if the other jurors could have said that that wasn't the case at the time, if a proper inquiry and asking each and every juror, not even suggesting that it be done on the oath, but if it was asked what their responses would have been for the judge to make an informed decision. And I say this in the context that in light of the fact that our Constitution it places even a duty on the judge to, as the custos morum of the Constitution, to protect the right of the, the appellants, that it was incumbent on him to ensure that he makes the inquiry so he protects the fair trial right. So that would be in response to your question as it connects. It connects. So what flows from that then is when we get to the late retirement, we have a, a a juror who is the fruit of the poisonous tree or the, the introduction of the poison, no knowledge of how far the poison is. I'm not inviting the court to speculate, but that's all we are left to do respectfully. And what happens in that situation is we don't know if the pressure arises because there, were, there, there was a situation where these jurors were able to say, I would participate in a bribe, allegedly, or not. And so the verdict that comes could never be a true verdict in light of that. So that's the submission as it connects from incident two to incident three. Now, in relation to proviso, the proviso, and I think you had knocked some of the win out of Mr. Lord Reed because I would have borrowed your words in, in, in the judgment to say that you can't provide the unfairness. You can't provide the injustice. It's just not possible. It would have been an absurdity in the law. 